all the meetings of the Libertad County Board of Commission to order Mr. Brown has a meeting been properly advertised? Yes, sir, it has. I'm not sure who will fall in the hands of Ms. Patty. It's just listening to the tape or watching the We're trying to provide her a synopsis in the meantime, yes, sir. At this time, Pastor Henry Frazier is here. He will come and lead us with our invitation, leader followed by a pledge of allegiance. Let's stand now for invitation. Thank you for coming, sir. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for this great opportunity that you afforded us. And we thank you because we realize that had it not been for you, we wouldn't be where we are and are doing what we are doing. But because of your kindness, your mercy, and your grace towards us, that you extended our days and our moments and allowed us to be a part of another day, another month that you have provided for us, protected us, and you have guided us. Now, God, we pray again over these your servants that you've been elected to be in the position that they are in. We pray, oh God, that you will give them the direction, give them the inspiration, give them the wisdom that are necessary to move us forward once again. Bless us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor Reason. The minutes from March would require our approval. Have you had time to review those? Chairman, I'll just have to admit I scanned over them. I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. Somebody else did. I didn't. Chairman, I'll second it. That was a motion. Yes, sir. And they say we'll approve any necessary corrections. Motion to second, we approve the minutes unless there be any corrections. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your hand, please. Again, let's let the welcome everybody who's uh, who's following us on Facebook Live, live streaming. Thank you, sir. I had to hit the button. Now I'd like to welcome everybody who's following us <laughs> on Facebook Live. Um, it's a great day in Liberty County. Uh, let me start by saying I think most of us are following the March Madness and the NCAA championship and. Local Hinesville board made us proud last night, didn't he? Yes, he yeah. did. Can we give a great hand to <laughs> number 45, Davion Mitchell. We shall all be wearing green and gold in here today for Baylor. <laughs> <laughs> We're certainly proud of him. Uh, I told him he has joined an elite group, <clears throat> someone who's won a high school state championship and an NCAA. Not many people probably can have those kind of bragging rights, so we're very proud of pride that he brings to our community. And we're hoping that he'll be able to come home and we can recognize him in some form or some fashion accurately. But I wanted to uh, say that publicly that we're very proud to hear them say Hinesville, Georgia, Davion Mitchell <clears throat> from Liberty County, Georgia. Wish him well. Wish him well. Now, um, Mr. Brown tells me that we have a proclamation this, this evening, telecommunication week, telecommunicators week, excuse me. Yes, sir. Um, Next week, April 11th through the 17th, uh, is National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, and uh, Sarah K. Smith is here uh, from 911, and wanted to see if the commission would entertain adoption of this proclamation in honor of those 911 telecommunicators that do such a great job. For all that Erica does for us, yes, we will. <laughs> Come on down, Miss Erica. <laughs> and Mr. Chair, if you allow me to, I'll read the proclamation. Is that your support team you have there with you? No, no support. No. They're working. <laughs> <laughs> They're working. Wait, wait a minute, uh, Miss Erica. Is that the support team? Not all. Everyone's. Been <laughs> <laughs> all right. Great. All answer. right. Proclamation for National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, April 11th through the 17th, 2021. Whereas emergencies can occur at any time that require police, fire, or emergency medical services. And whereas when an emergency occurs, the prompt response of police officers, firefighters, and paramedics is critical to the protection of life and preservation of property. And whereas the safety of our police officers and firefighters is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who telephone the Liberty County Emergency Communications Center. And whereas public safety telecommunicators are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services. 
And whereas public safety telecommunicators are the single vital link for our police officers and firefighters by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them information, and ensuring their safety. And whereas public safety telecommunicators of, the, of Liberty County have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, suppression of fires, and treatment of patients. And whereas each dispatcher has exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during the performance of their job in the past year, Therefore, be it resolved that the Liberty County Board of Commissioners declare the week of April 11th through the 17th, 2021 to be National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week in Liberty County in honor of the men and women whose diligence and professionalism keep our city and citizens safe. All right. Uh, let's see. If you were signed in, Ms. Erica, if you come up here. Okay. We'll have our Kodak moment. Mr. Bull, just keep your camera ready, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner, will you all come in, please? So we... Mr. Chairman, do we need to adopt that? You can't move. We, can, we can't move to adopt that? Yeah, make a motion we uh, adopt the resolution as read and scribed. Is there a second to adopt the, the resolution? Second. Yes. Motion is second. Any further discussion? All in favor, sign up. Raise your right hand, please. All right. Where, come right here. Come on in. Y'all in? Put Justin, where'd you come from, Justin? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you got it right, Ms. Mosley? Yes, sir. <laughs> One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Hold on, do one more. Did you want us to smile? <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> all, right. all right. Thank you. 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 Those are our behind the scenes heroes. That's right. <coughs> when just what? Hey, one call. That's all. That's all. One call. <laughs> one call. That's all. That's right. She didn't hear that one. I used to work for those. Oh, what, they said one call, that's all. <laughs> Please give our appreciation to your staff. All right. all right, departmental reports, LCPC. Good, how are you? All right, it's off right now. All right, so I have two zoning actions for you tonight. Um, one of them, as promised, is another Isle of Wight variance, uh, as you had last month. <laughs> um, uh, so we'll uh, start with that. This was a, a variance petition submitted by Mr. Josh Wheeler uh, on behalf of AOI South, which is just him. But this is a variance to decrease the side setbacks of uh, two properties from 15 feet to 10 feet. This is on Isle of Wight Road, um, down to, in that area on uh, Main Street down there. And uh, let's see here, this parcel is uh, further described as 281D35, join, and it's, uh, oops, excuse me. <coughs> and it's uh, zoned R2 for single and two family residential, and it's about 0.67 acres, located in District 4. Uh, just a quick refresher, I'll, I'll actually bring it up on the map. So here's our sign and legal ad. So we're in this area again, as we mentioned last time, there are a lot of these lots here that are just 60 feet long mm -hmm. instead of the regular, you know, 80 feet that would be uh, <coughs> mandated by this zoning R2. Mm. Um, and as we said last month, you know, we, we did some investigating. <coughs> so, you know, when we do uh, come with forward to you with our uh, unified development ordinance later this year, um, that'll, you know, hopefully rectify this problem. That'll decrease the side setbacks for these lots okay. to, down to 10 feet on each side. So hopefully these won't keep coming back into you. Okay. Uh, so here's a closer up look. Like I said, there's these two lots here, each of them 60 feet across. Um, so there's uh, the marsh is right here. As I said, this is a main street on the Isle of Wight area, uh, zoned R2, like all the lots around it. Um, this area around here is zoned DM1, the dunes and marshes zoning. It's just marshland. So uh, basically, these are the conditions for granting the variance. Uh, like I said, each of these lots has a width of 60 feet. It should be 80 feet according to the zoning R2. Uh, so there is an exceptional, these are exceptional lots. Uh, the application of the appendix to this piece of property would create an unnecessary hardship. Uh, no, uh, you know, a single family home could conceivably be constructed with these 15 foot setbacks, but it would only be about 30 feet wide. 
Uh, while it's possible we find that that would be limiting to the single family intended use of this property. Mm -hmm. Uh, such conditions are peculiar. Uh, they are not, as I said, there are many, many lots um, around this area that are suffering from the same issue. Relief, if granted, would not cause substantial detriment to the public good or impair the purposes and intent of the ordinance. Um, we said it would not. So just a quick summary again. Parcels are zoned R2, which requires a setback of 15 feet on each side. This parcel is only about 60 feet wide, so it leaves only 30 feet of room to build. Uh, these, this is limiting in the construction of a single-family site-built home, which is one of the permitted uses of the R2 zoning district. So our recommendation is approval with standard conditions for this variance. All right. Uh, let's see, which part of uh, District 4? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Are you Commissioner Jones? Yes, sir. All right. And they gave us fair warning that this would be coming before us. Yes, sir. <laughs> you may recall the previous discussion about some of these lots are just narrow from there uh -huh. and when they were drawn out. So anybody that wants to build is going to run into this until such time as the unified. Unified development ordinance, yes, sir. We're, we're making one for the whole, you know, county right. to kind of get our, our on the same page with all the other <clears throat> jurisdictions here. All right. But. All right. So okay, we'll hear from you, sir. Mr. Chairman, please, I would. Uh, I make a motion that we move forward with the uh, zoning variance as uh, suggested, recommended by the LCPC. Okay, is there a second? Second. second. Motion and a second that we uh, follow the recommendation of the LCPC for this particular petitioner. Um, any further discussion? Uh, I guess I need to ask this just for the sake of consistency. Was there any opposition? Uh, we actually did have one gentleman come in. Um, he is the uh, owner of this marsh area down here. Wow. Um, he uh, he seemed to disagree with the uh, uh, variance, but didn't really wasn't able to give us a reason why. Yeah. Um, he uh, I, I don't I don't want to put words in his mouth. I understand. He said, but Marshland? Yeah, he's the owner of this marsh land down here. He doesn't own any any of the property, the <coughs> livable property, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Down here. He bought marshland. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess he bought property that contains the marshland. Usually what happened, they buy like a big spread of property, mm -hmm. and it generally has the marsh, so I mean, I stuck with it all. <laughs> right, but, but I, I'm, I'm, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're right. We'll uh, I did not hear from anybody except okay. him, though. All right. Okay. All right. Just, just had to ask. All right. All in favor of uh, the uh, motion that's on the floor, let it known by raising your right hand, please. Any opposed? All right. Thank you, sir. And I have one more variance for you. Mm -hmm. This is a submitted by uh, Tier Long Engineering on behalf of Mindy Morales, the owner, for a setback variance on her property at 239 Isle of White. This is the uh, dock supply right off uh, Isle of White Road, right when you turn up off of 84. Mm -hmm. I'll show you on the map here. But um, it's zone B2 right now, and it requires a rear setback of 30 feet. Uh, she's asking that this distance be reduced to 20 feet. This parcel is six acres, more or less, and described as parcel 242B26, located in District 1. So again, our, uh, this is the dock supply right here, and our legal app. So as I said, you're coming down 84. Uh, if you're going you know, away from Hinesville, take a left up on Isle of Wight, and it's basically the first thing on your right here, uh, the dock supply company. So zoom in a little bit. Uh, I'll try to clarify. So there's two things going on here. One. This building that exists right here already is currently 20 feet from the rear setback line, so it's actually already uh, too close. It's, it's 10 feet too close to the rear setback line. Um, Ms. Morales wanting to put down a second building right here. Uh, it's quite large, and the only way to fit it in at this point would be to just scoot it back to that 20 feet line so that it doesn't uh, kill this live oak tree right here. It's a 30 inch live oak. So uh, as I said, it's zone B2. <coughs> commercial use. Uh, here is our narrative. Setback variance is requested for 239 Olive White Road on behalf of Mindy Morale. Existing site is partially developed lot with several existing structures. The proposed site will consist of one new storage facility with required parking improvements. The site is zone B2 for commercial, which requires a rear setback of 30 feet. A variance is being requested for the new building to be placed within the rear yard setback line. The proposed building needs to be set back 10 feet in order to save a 30 inch live oak tree. Additionally, the building's rear wall will be closely in line with an existing structure. Uh, basically what, uh, I guess to 
I'm going to show you a little bit closer on this map here. So this is a you know site plan here. As I said, this is about 20 feet right here. It should be 30, mm -hmm. according to the zoning. Uh, they're asking to put this building down with the same 20-foot setback, and basically the variance is asking to decrease the rear setback line of the whole property from 30 to 20 feet. Okay. And, uh, I don't know if that was me. <laughs> I don't know who that was. Um, let's see here. So as far as our variance conditions, there are extraordinary and exceptional conditions pertaining to this piece of property. No. The application of the appendix <clears throat> to this piece of property would create an unnecessary hardship. Yes, uh, if following the setbacks outlined by the ordinance, this 30-inch live oak tree would need to be cut down to place the building. Such conditions are peculiar to this piece of property. Relief, if granted, would not cause substantial detriment to the public good. Uh, there is currently a non-conforming building, like we said, on the property that's 20 feet from the rear property line, and Ms. Morrell wishes to place another mini storage building in the rear of the property. But if it were placed 30 feet from the rear, of course, like I said, the tree would need to be cut down. Uh, Staff recommendation is approval for this variance based on basically just like saving the tree. Um, and I believe uh, Brandon is here if you have any questions uh, for Brandon. TR Long Engineering about this project. And you have any questions for me first? Any opposition? <laughs> uh, yeah. We've had no calls either way about this. Okay. Yeah. Right. Got a question. <clears throat> yes, sir. On that, I'll go back to the, that first. Zoomed out one or? That one right there, I think it is. Yeah. Yes, sir. You said that one's already 20 feet? Yes, sir. That's a pre existing non conformity. It's 10 feet too close to the rear setback line as it is. Was that something that we approve or it was just put there? Um, uh, Jeff, do you want to talk about that? Because we had. I think, I think the zoning was already in place when the building got put there. I think that was a mistake. Oversight <clears throat> by the building department at the time. Mm -hmm. so this is another one of those issues. Do it and don't get caught. I, I can't, I can't <clears throat> explain that happened, but it happened. Right. I'm just saying. Uh, all right. Any other questions? I like trees, so I do I too. Do too. <laughs> yeah. 30, 30 inch. Yeah. Yeah. We do as well. Yeah. Yeah. Save the tree, save the tree. Save the tree. Save the tree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What you need? Ready to put motion to your district is a district one. Mm -hmm. Now they want to save, they want to save the tree. That's what they told me. <laughs> I want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. sir. They're, the tree's right here on right the there. diagram, yeah. Um, actually, I don't know if, if uh, Chris all wants to come up <clears> and talk if you're yeah, okay with that. And then why he's walking up? Uh, I'm good if, because if one of them has a 20. One's already there. there. Another yeah. one, if we yeah. put it at 30, won't they be offset? The good yeah, be offset. The yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. you lose a tree. <laughs> and we lose a tree. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, I mean, I, I guess if Commissioner so, Stevens wants you to come up. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Brandon Purcell, TR mm -hmm. Long Engineering. Uh, yeah, the idea is to save the tree. Okay. Uh, but uh, okay. The, the tree island's cut out. There'll be concrete parking around it, but there'll be a conforming to standard size to save the tree. Okay. All right. Well, and I, I will say this, Commissioner well, Stevens, uh, while I do agree, you save as many trees as you can, but secondarily, the other building's already. Already there. And I, I, that's why I just asked, there, was it so. something that we approved, or was it just mm -hmm. put there? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I believe in them making it uniform, but mm -hmm. yeah. So if we can save the tree and grant them the. For, for uniformity, yes. That 10 foot. That's fine. the word. What you're trying to say is you don't want to go there in six weeks and find a tree down in the building up. There you go. Okay. I thought that's what you said. You got it. <clears throat> Entertain a motion, sir. Jim, I make a motion that we follow the recommendation of LCPC. To, to save the tree. Is there a save second? Save the tree. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> second that we follow the recommendations of LCPC uh, to save the tree and for uniformity when it comes to the building that's already, already there, too. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand, please. Uh, tree is saved. Thank you, commissioners, for saving that tree. Thank well, thank you. Mm -hmm. oh. so I'm here to present the preliminary plat for the columns at Habersham Phase 3. Um, the property is owned by Habersham Development Group. Uh, TR Long did the <coughs> engineering for the project. 
It is 52 lots of single family homes on a total of 58.76 acres located off of Leroy Kofer Highway. Um, so here's Leroy Kofer right here. Habersham Road is here. Um, this whole area here was part of a, a large PUD. I think it was originally approved in the early to mid uh, 2000s. <coughs> Um, they did some preliminary work getting roads in here, including this area where this, this phase is taking place. But um, things kind of went south at the end of the, you know, around uh, the end of the 2000s. And um, so this isn't being de under consideration right now. But this part of that whole pod was known as Lyman Hall North. And um, phase one was Wilkins Road here. It was a lot off of Wil both sides of Wilkins Road. Uh, not too long ago, I presented uh, phase two, final plat, which was the, off of Tondi Way. <coughs> All these lots, and actually the whole PUD was was proposed to be served by a community, privately operated community water system, which is where the star is. So this phase will continue to be served by that community water service, and the lots will have on-site septic systems. The plat is shown in, in two parts. Um, but this is the overall <coughs> site plan. I added some coloring just to make it easier to see. The, the blue areas here are existing ponds. There's three of them, the little tiny one over here and a big one in the middle. These were in, already in, in place. They, they constructed these when they first started doing work initially on this PUD. <coughs> and the road was already uh, roughed in. And uh, this green area shaded lot here is roughly one acres. It's going to be a community lot that's going to be owned by the HOA. And these hash green areas here are the um, are just wetlands. The road has a 60-foot right-of-way. All the drainage within that 60-foot right-of-way will be the responsibility of the county. The drainage for the ponds is going to be the responsibility of the HOA or the property owners, because you can see their lots actually go into the pond. There's a drainage easement around it, so um, <coughs> the this county would not be responsible for maintaining the pond, either pond. Um, and this red line here is kind of the division line between the two sheets of the preliminary plat. So the first sheet here, there again, the big pond in the middle, the smaller one on the side, these lots around it, and then you continue on. Um, oh, before I continue on, there is hard to see, but there is this red line here, <coughs> that red line is basically right here. So this area right here, just so you don't get confused, is actually shown on both sheets of the plat. And then here's the remainder of the lots for this uh, phase, phase three, and the community lot right here. <coughs> the lot standards are the same for the other phases. The minimum usable lot size is 7,000 square feet, which is 0.16 acres. And the lots range in size from half acre to just about one and a quarter acre. The county health department likes to see at least a half acre lot if you're going to have an on-site septic system. <coughs> uh, the front side and rear setbacks are 35, 15, and 25 feet, respectively. As I mentioned, they'll be served by uh, on-site septic systems and that privately operated community water system. The ponds and the drainage facilities outside of the right-of-way are not the responsibility of the the county, and there will be a note on the final plat that dictates that it will be the HOA or the property owner that is responsible. <coughs> this was something that was put in place for phase two as well, so all the deeds to the phase two lots also have that same language saying that the county's not responsible. And that new road loops around, it's 1.128 uh, uh, miles, and that is being dedicated to the county. Once that has been satisfactorily completed, then it will go for final acceptance by the county. <coughs> this was before the Planning Commission in March, and they recommended approval with standard and special conditions of the preliminary plot for the colonies at Habersham Phase 3. Our standard, the special condition is that prior to consideration of the final plot um, by the Board of Commissioners, that they documentation be submitted from the Department of Health indicating that the development has been approved for on-site septic systems and for individual wells or serviced by a privately operated community water system. Happy to answer I'm, any questions. Mr. Brown, I almost thought that was 
maybe I was up. That was uh, just a part of the uh, the process for the health department to make their approval, and, the, and that it wouldn't have to be a special condition. I thought that was just done <coughs> automatically. Well, I mean, so it, it, according to the ordinance, it's got to be one or the other. So they would. I mean, absolutely. Okay. It's got to have water service to the rest. I'm, I'm kind of confused, then, Jeff. Why? <coughs> I mean, I, I, I'm, it doesn't hurt that it's here, but. <coughs> Yeah, Mr. Chairman, it is a standard condition, but the, uh, some representatives from the health department came to see Mr. me and Mr. Brown about uh -huh. three months ago, and they, they want some assurances when we approve new plats uh -huh. that they've uh -huh. had a chance to weigh in on it. So we just put that in there for uh -huh. extra assurance to them that you know, they will have the final say. Now, I said we're not going to talk long tonight, but what made them feel this way? What made them approach you? Or has something fallen through the cracks? Are they no, I mean, there was some... Uh, there, I think one thing that triggered it was somebody some cutting some land out on the coast on uh, I forgot what the name of that road is out there near uh, near Yeoman's Road uh, property that uh, Billy Jones and Jack Waters had and mm -hmm. they, were, they were cutting off some big lots out there and mm -hmm. we approved a plat and those lots were uh, pretty sizable they were, they were mm -hmm. more than an acre but they, they came in and said hey we got we got uh, plat we got requests for some <coughs> on these acre lots and we'd like for y'all to start. Uh, letting us know ahead of time uh, before you approve plats so that mm. we don't get stuck with a lot where we have to or we feel like we have pressure to uh, do a subject tank. So okay, okay. every plat that we approve in the office and, and okay. going forward, every plat that we bring to you uh, will okay. have this assurance on there just so that uh, we can assure the health department that we're they're, 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 okay. they got a seat at the table at the beginning. So they, want to, they don't want to be the bad guy after That's the right. process has already right. started, okay. They, they want to have a say before you approve okay. that final plat. Okay, all right. That explains it. That explains it. All right. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. I have a question for her. <clears throat> Go back to the water system. There. On, on, that, on that corner lot? Yes. My concern is <laughs> you, you saying it's being served by a private water a privately operated community water system, <clears throat> sir. Do they have fire protection out there, hydrants out there? I would defer to the engineer for the project. <laughs> hey, good evening. I'm not the engineer, I'm the applicant, but I've been, I did the previous phase, so. <clears throat> um, so part of what was installed back when they started the development, the road's already been cut in, and the, the water line is actually already laid all the way around that road, including fire hydrants. What size of a, is it eight inch or? Eight inch water main, yes sir. Eight inch water line? Yes sir. Okay, and what size of pump, what size of pump you got pushing it? That, I don't know. Uh, but, but, but I do, I do know that it is, the, the original well was designed for the overall development. Okay. So it, and I'm sure that Trent can provide documentation on this if you need it, but it is well oversized for the number of lots that are out there right now because everywhere you see a, a sand, you know, a dirt road on that mm -hmm. southern part, there's a, there's a water main run along there too that's, that it was sized to serve. So we're only just serving this, that corner there. Okay. Anything else? Uh, not for right now. That's it. Jeff, I, I had a question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, were you through Commissioner Stevens? Go ahead. Uh, I was just, there was a part there you mentioned about the, the county would take the responsibility after what period of time? I mean, is there a bond up there now, Joey? Uh, there will be. There will be. They will have to put has one to, in for all the be. improvements. Mm -hmm. There has to be. There is or there is not? There is not. At there this point, not. this is a preliminary <laughs> plat. The mm -hmm. original design for phase three was preliminary platted back in the 2000s, and it had 30 lots. So now this is a new preliminary plat because they've added an additional 22 lots. So they haven't finished with all the improvements. Um, when they finish the improvements, or most of them, and they come with a final plat, that's when they come in with the maintenance bond and installation guarantees for what's left to be done. But, but he just mentioned that the water line is already in around the road. So did we have a bond on that when they started it, Jeff? No. I mean, would there had to have been a bond in place to, to guarantee that? There's, there's no bond on the water main to the county because it's private. We pay a tap fee and a service fee to the private provider, and they take, take care of all the maintenance. They've already gone out there and tested the water line that's in the ground right now for this phase, 
and made sure that it's operational and it holds pressure before we even submitted the plat. But the, okay. but the county will have nothing to do with that water main. So what, and I'm just oh, piggybacking oh, oh, on what oh. Commissioner Stevens said then. So <clears throat> at the time that you start building, the hydrants will be in place on the whole. If you've got a building that's out there like happened in Flemington that caught on fire, there happened to be water there. And that's what I'm asking. Will there be water there in that situation or there won't be? Yes, sir. The water is there now. If you go out there right now, there are the, the eight inch main and the hydrants and the, the actual service lines to the individual houses are already in the ground. They were put there years ago. And we've had those checked by the private water company to make sure they're operational. Okay, and that'll still, at what time will that be turned over to the county? It will not. It will okay, not. it'll always be? It's pr totally privately private. owned. Okay, and then you mentioned uh, the roads would be deeded to the county at what particular time, or ditches, what is this? The, the, the road will be deeded to the county at the time of final plat after it's been paved and in, inspected and signed off on by Paul Zeckman and Trent Long. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, what, and we'll post the standard, I forget if it's a one or two year bond, there's a warranty maintenance bond on that road that we'll, that we'll have to post before you allow us to record the plat. Well, I know, and <coughs> of course, um, in, in the city you have, you know, it's maintained by the city all their roadside ditches and whatever's got to be done. So now, you know, it's the burden is going to be left up to our folks, Joy? Once we accept it. Mm -hmm. Right. Once we accept it. But even when we accept it, that bond will stay in place for that period of time to make sure the hook. I know, but I'm just saying once they're gone and the houses is full, then that's going to be mm -hmm. us looking after it from yes, now sir. on. Yes, sir. That's which standard. is a general fund type issue, right? Yes, mm-hmm. That's standard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just saying, where we, where do we have them at now that there's open ditches? Though, right. Are there open ditches here? Yes, sir. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I mean, we've got some areas that's got curb and gutter that's not that much of a maintenance mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why we're out here paving them on different places. But mm -hmm. you're going to have open ditches in there go and trim. for whoever, I guess it's going to be a mile and Mr. Jones's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. situation. <clears throat> And, and I've just noticed that in some of the other areas that we're at. So, um. Well, I, I do want to be clear that the day-to-day -day maintenance of, of the road shoulders and the ditches will be the homeowners. Just like if you go to a subdivision with curb and gutter, mm -hmm. the grass between the curb and their house, even though it's in the right-of-way, the homeowner will maintain that part of a yard. So from a drainage standpoint, yes. I mean, if there's a, if there's a major blockage or something, just like if there was a blockage in a pipe, the county would be responsible for doing that. But as far as an ongoing general maintenance, that, that, that'll fall on the homeowners in the HOA. Okay. So but it'll, but it'll be ours. It'll well, be, I mean, and, and and that's, I know that's nothing that we won't, we're going to ever get away from, yeah. but, you know, we, um, we're still, I believe that's the same number of employees is out there. So I just right. want us to remember that when we start with our budget this year, that that's, um, you know, I'm all for the growth as much as anybody, but you try to look at some of these things ahead of time, and uh, that's all that I'm trying to say is we uh, yes, need to make sure that, you know, that we've got the the folks out there when we accept it. You know, that they're, they're going to be on the digest, but you're still going to have a lot of people out there. That's a pretty good-sized subdivision from what I've seen, the whole thing. Well, the original... I the original one was probably eight, nine hundred lots, but that was on, right. based on a lot of different factors. This one, this one here is, is going to be 52 yeah. lots. But it's, it's migrating on further east, right? I mean, those roads are still in. Well, there's no further land to the east. All, everything that you see to the south there is owned by somebody else entirely. I, that, I don't have anything to do with that. So it, it may get developed one day, right. but, but I don't have any control over that. Okay. What's your name again, sir? I'm Charles Way. I'm Haversham Development Group. Good to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. <coughs> Thank you for your time. You, Mr. Uh -huh. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Just got just a clarification. I heard you said that the water system will never be turned over. It will re remain private. Yes, sir. Okay. What about in the event that we do have a fire situation out there? Um, will Liberty County Fire Service have access to the water system then? Yes, they're, they're standard hydrants. They're just like any other hydrant that's put in the county. Okay. So they're, they don't need any kind of special access or anything like that. Um, and I, I believe that's a state law that all private water systems have to allow public emergency services to use them for okay. fire protection. All right. Since you're the developer, right? 
Yes, sir. What's the pressure uh, on your fire hydrants? Uh, I do not know that. I'd have to ask the, the water company that did the test. Could you provide that to Mr. Brown? We certainly, I think we'll be required to prior to the final plat being approved. Uh, I, I just, we, we just want to see if yes, it's going to meet what we need for the county fire service. Because when you bring a fire engine out there. I, I'll uh, let, uh, he's, this is the engineer. Still designed for fire flow. The whole system is, so it'll meet it. Um, when we provide that information, Mr. Gilbert. Okay. That won't be a problem. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right. You don't make no mistake about it. We, we're pro-growth 100%. Right. We, we want to do it right. All of us sitting up here have seen some stuff yeah. slide through, and we that's one thing we want to try to make sure it don't happen. Yes, sir, and, and I wasn't trying to argue. I was just trying to be, be specific. So. We, you can go straight across the road over there, and, and I don't know whose district that is, and it's don't, we've don't, got issues there don't, now. Don't send him over there. <laughs> do what? <laughs> don't send him. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right, All right sir. Yep. Yeah. District District One, right? Or District Four? Oh, district back four. to you now. That's right. That's right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, further question then. Okay. Um, when we discussed this uh, development at our last meeting, mm -hmm. um, we asked a bunch of questions. Some of the other uh, commissioners also about the stormwater ponds and all of those issues. Um, I'm sort of apprehensive about asking questions now because I piggybacked on one of the other commissioners last meeting and sort of got my head tore off when I brought up my line of questioning. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I will, I'd like to know, do we um, know who the private water company is as of now? Who are they? Reputable. It's, is it, it's water utility management. They're based out of Savannah. They're, They're probably the second largest private water provider in mm -hmm. the Savannah area. They do business here now in Liberty County. All right, I asked that question because we as the county, we don't have any oversight mm -hmm. over private companies. Mm -hmm. This is no. made by the state. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The reason I ask, because I'm familiar with the uh, water utilities management mm -hmm. guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're having some issues with them at the present, uh, another development or community that they service. And uh, the residents have been trying to work with the same water management company and they've so far haven't got any, gotten any satisfaction from them and we're, I am following up on that, um, trying to get some oversight to get some satisfaction for uh, the people that they are servicing at the present. So hopefully we won't have any issues with them. Um, I certainly hope not. I'm not aware of any uh, issues in the existing phases. Um, and we've tried to be uh, diligent with them and asking them to go out there and check everything and make sure that <coughs> they think it's OK before I, we got too far along in the development process. So they, they've been very involved. And so far, it's gone smoothly. So I hope there's no issues, but I'm not aware of any in this community. Good. Would you just, we call it being a community partner, would you just, in your communication with them, let them know that one of our commissioners has some concerns or assistance they already have in Liberty County? Yes, sir. And Absolutely. we would like for them to do whatever they need to do to make sure that that's not passed down to your development. Yeah, well, listen, I don't want to be under the microscope because of something that they failed to exactly. do. So I will gladly pass that, just, that along. Let's pass that on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right, Chair, take the motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion that we move forward and adopt the zoning variance as suggested or recommended by the LCPC. Yes. Throw that word in for me. Preliminary plan. Preliminary uh -huh. plan. Uh -huh. For colonies at the colonies at Habersham Phase Three. All right, good. Now, is a second that motion? Second. Motion second that we approve the preliminary plans presented for the College of the Habersham Phase 3. And so we do appreciate you coming and helping us to understand what your, I hate to say the word motives, but what your intent is. What your intent is. And like Commissioner Walter said, thank you for uh, helping to develop, uh, I don't say rural liberty county, what's the word? It used to be rule. <laughs> unincorporated. That's the word I want to use. Unincorporated. Yeah, Liberty County. Thank you, sir. All, right. All in favor, raise your right hand, please. Those opposed. All 
All right, motion passes. You. Wish you well, sir. You. We take tours and we look around. Mm -hmm. All right. Miller Park Fire Station. Mr. Chairman, while, uh, while Mr. McCall's coming, so we went through some NGOs space needs see. analysis um, with, with the fire department who met with Mr. McCall. And so Mr. McCall at this point has done a preliminary design uh, on the station. He's here to review this with you tonight. Um, if everything's in order, then to proceed to construction drawings and certainly to answer any questions. He can answer any questions about the building envelope and some of those types and then the construction and potentially the cost and the chief and Mr. Huffman are here, assistant chief, to answer any questions about the space needs. So good evening. My name is Rusty McCall. I'm with McCall Architecture out of Valdosta, Georgia. I came in town this afternoon and um, started off by going out to the East End Fire Station to check up on that and photograph it now that it's um, up and running and occupied and then stopped back by to see Clinton Wells because uh, we're talking about doing some work out there at Public Works, hopefully expanding that in the near future. And then I stopped by um, the Joseph Miller Park um, to walk through the woods and look at the site for the Miller Park uh, Fire Station, which I'd like to show you now, if you could bring up that first uh, PDF. Um, so <clears throat> the recycling area uh, is located right here up off of uh, Left Field Drive and the recycling area is right down in this area. And <clears throat> just beyond that would be the curb cut coming into the new uh, Miller Park Fire Station. This being the fire station proper itself, uh, we've got adequate turning radius and parking all the way around it. And not only is it a fire station, I'll show you in just a minute, but it's also offices um, for the fire marshal and it's got a large training room and we'll get into that in just a minute. And this whole site layout, we've worked with uh, Trent Long and laying all that out to make sure it fits the site. There's a septic field on the back corner of it and then a detention basin in the back corner of the site. And I understand that the county is exploring uh, upgrading this roadway and also doing some work over here on these ball fields as well, but that's, that's not part of my job. So um, if you would, it's the same PDF file, but if you'd scroll down to page two, please. There you go. And um, if you could zoom in on these uh, right hand. Oh. You could uh, maybe zoom in on the right hand half of this. You could use that marquee zoom that I showed you about. And we'll look at the ground floor uh, just quickly. And I know um, that you would like to get home, but <laughs> I, I figure it's your money, so you want to see what you're going to be spending it on. Um, so, uh, there's a large training room up front that's available to the public, uh, but it's also for use uh, training uh, um, fire personnel and the various tasks that they have to keep up with for continuing education and whatnot. There are restrooms that are accessible after hours um, to that training room as well. We've got um, reception, uh, fire chief, deputy fire chief, and then back in this corner is where the fire marshal is, plan review area and whatnot. If you could pan down, please. There you go. Um, we have three pull-through uh, bays. So that will be six apparatus that can fit in those bays, and then two back-end bays. So you can put a total of eight uh, fire truck apparatus in this station. Um, there is a turnout room with all of their uh, gear. There is what's called a scuba uh, self-contained breathing apparatus room where they re refill tanks and whatnot. Um, we've got a decontamination room. Uh, we've got a maintenance room where they work on things and whatnot. There's ample storage. And then there's also a facility for um, uh, physical training or gym, if you will. Um, let's go uh, pan to the right. This is the second floor. So up above the apparatus bay is where um, all the personnel live. Um, there is, uh, I guess you'd call that a, a TV room and whatnot, uh, dining room, kitchen, storage. All of these rooms around the perimeter are uh, two bunk bedrooms. There's 12 of them, so uh, ultimately you could, hold, you, could, you could sleep 24 personnel, 24 firefighters there at any one time. 
Uh, I don't think it's going to ramp up to that immediately, but it could in the future. Um, men's and women's restrooms, showers uh, to support all of that. Um, and then there's also uh, captain, assistant captain and whatnot, all those offices and whatnot up there as well. Um, let's, if you could pan down now and then maybe zoom in on just that photograph where it oc occupies the entire screen. <clears throat> So the top uh, portion is uh, what would be facing the public, um, you know, with uh, the doors to Apparatus Bay. This is a public entrance where you come in. That training room is right behind this area. And then, of course, the back side of the building uh, that you would not really see from the public side. Uh, the materials and colors are somewhat similar to what we used when we did the Gum Branch Fire Station, uh, but this would actually be dressed up a little bit nicer, uh, even though it's you know, not in Hinesville, it is on Midway, it's on a, the public is going to see it a lot. We want this to look, uh, you know, better. So it's not the Taj Mahal, we're not spending a tremendous amount of money on it, but it will be a, a really nice looking fire station. Um, if there's anything about the program, the what's included in it, I'm happy to answer any questions on that. Um, and also, as Joey mentioned, uh, Chief Darby, and Assistant Chief Huffman are here this evening as well to address any questions you may have. Yes, sir. Would you back up to the, the first layout showing the driveway? Yes. <clears throat> It'd be that page one of the same file. Okay. Okay. You want him to zoom in? Let's say right. Let's say right there. Okay. Is that cement or asphalt? That is um, asphalt, and the reason why there's a there's actually a mixture of materials on this job site, and it's for cost reasons. So everything you see in black or darker color is asphalt, and this stippled or dotted pattern is concrete. And the reason for that is when the trucks come in and have to start doing tight radiuses and turning, you know, slowly, the wheels can really dig up the asphalt. And so, but concrete's more expensive than asphalt, so we don't want to do concrete everywhere, if that answers your question. Rusty, Rusty, right here, when that truck is coming off of Highway 84, you're going to have a turning radius problem. And if that asphalt is hot, it's going to tear it up in a matter of times. And I just feel like we're going to have, I know asphalt, I mean, cement costs more. Yes, sir. Okay. But when that truck turns off 84 right there onto that hot asphalt, and in a period of time, it's going to start it digging could. it up. Yeah, and there's an, I, well, they're not going to be turning at speed because there's an, an acceleration and a deceleration lane right. that's built into the side. And also, um, I, I agree with you totally, but there, there are different grades of asphalt that you can build up uh, the courses and binders and whatnot. This, what Trent would put out here um, along Highway 84 is the highest grade DOT asphalt available. I mean, it's stuff like they use on airport runways. Okay. And so this isn't the cheap stuff. Okay. Yeah. All right. And if it, even if it does run up, I mean, Trent's right down the road. You can go. And you'll be gone. No, I won't be gone. I'll be in Valdosta. <laughs> okay. Now, <laughs> now uh, another question is, and, and, <laughs> and this is, might be a question for the chief, I'm not too sure. When they're doing testing of hoses, I'm is sorry. that enough space? When they're, test, when they're pressure testing the fire hoses, yes. is that enough room out there to do it with, as far as you know, from... I'm quite sure this is not your first fire station. Right. I'll let, um, I'll let Chief Darby address that because we've already, he already asked that question. He was like, you know, oh. hey, I've got to bring trucks from all over the county, and this is the station where I'm going to test them. And he wanted to make sure he had enough pullout room. So go ahead, Chief. Chairman, Commissioners, good evening. Um, the short answer is no um, for the magnitude of the amount of equipment that we currently have. Um, after speaking with... Uh, Mr. Brown, we are going to shift testing from one location to doing it at different locations so that way we don't have as much equipment at one site. 
Um, currently, we do. We utilize Gum Branch because it is our biggest site location mm -hmm. that we have. It is also um, the call volume is, is a lot less. Um, we have recently had some testing going on, just normal annual testing, and we've run into some size issues, but we also had the entire fleet shuttling going in and out of one location. One of the thought processes is not to, and we've been through this not only with, with this, but also maintenance on vehicles. I'm going to tell you, hard looks being given to actually going to the stations to service those vehicles mm -hmm. versus pulling them out of service from one location and, and drifting them around the county when calls may come in. So, so if we can start doing what we can at these stations, they're going to be there in case a call comes in. The other stations will be ready. You know, will it be a different pattern? Yes, but maintenance is another thing. Again, trying to keep assets where they're needed the most. Right, okay. okay. So, one last question on that issue. So if you go from station to station, I remember when our, one of our past fire chief was doing it. Uh, was there a different, Mr. Brown, was there, a, when he went from station to station, was there a setup cost at each station? You know him, the past, all right, Chief. Mm, I, I, or was there just one? Commissioner Stevens, I don't really remember, and, and, and part of that's my ignorance and actually what it takes <laughs> to set up and test that. <laughs> so the Chief may can answer that for you, too. We do. We, um, so the company comes and there's a, a service cost for doing the maintenance and whatnot, but there is a setup cost at each location. Um, to tell you, it, it really be based on the actual piece of equipment or apparatus being tested of what that cost is, but short answer is yes. If they go from Island Station to Miller Park out to Gum Branch, each move of setup and teardown there will be a cost. Just roughly not putting you on the spot, but what would that, <laughs> what, what, what could that cost possibly run per setup? Uh, honestly, I'm going to have to divert to Deputy Chief Huffman. He does a lot of that, that that's fallen inside of the operational realm. Good evening. Um, I know for the, when we do pump service testing, they bring in a large trailer that they fill up with water and they have to drain that in order to leave, to move from site to site and they charge $500 to pick up and move. We'd actually been reaching out to some of the other local departments trying to find other sites where we could combine it with multiple departments to help cut some of that cost down. Okay. The people that do the hose testing, uh, Commissioner Thrift probably saw some of it out there at the I station did. the last couple <laughs> of weeks. Um, they don't charge as much to pick up and move, but they have to have at least 200 feet straight away in a line to test the hose. And honestly, Miller Park will have a much better water system since it's going to be hooked into actual hydrants and water mains as opposed right. to what we have in Gum Branch okay. to facilitate all of the testing. I know that's not what we'll probably end up doing, but as far as Costco goes, I know it's $500 for the pump service testing. The hose testing company, I couldn't tell you specifically but I do know they will charge you every time they move to a new, new location. Okay, all right, okay. So, so is, your, is your, I'm trying to follow. So is the concern the amount of space we would have here for the testing? Is that the concern, Commissioner Stevens? I was just, I was just questioning that, That's, that yeah. issue. Yeah, it, that, that is an issue. I mean, it's not an issue, it's just something that I'm familiar with on a, yeah. a little bit being out there in the fire service. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I had a question concerning when, Mr. McCall was giving the overview. Um, is, is fire services going to move out there? It said chief's office. Most of all of those on the bottom floor were offices. Yeah, so the you know, the, the, the temporary location for them has always been up here at the EMA office, but absolutely right. they'll be, that's what had been anticipated all along. They would relocate administrative staff to this station. This will be the main station. Okay, all right. <clears throat> True headquarters. Yes, sir, it will be. Headquarters on the east end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As long as you get to the west end in time, that's all that matters. I don't have any any knowledge much of the fire hoses. I've started a few fires and they ain't that much to put out. But now <laughs> we we talked about this and 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 briefly we want to make sure this is the right spot, Chief. I mean the right place to put it. I know I know we've got nothing from Flemington all the way to Midway. So we've all agreed that's the right spot. Commissioner Stevens has brought up the point about the drive off the road, but we've talked about it in this meeting and we've talked about it sidebar in different places. There's no 
turning lane out there right yet. So even when we start construction, Rusty, there's going to be traffic in and out that road a lot. So before we get cranked up, what, you know, let's don't get the cart in front of the horse here. I mean, there's going to be cement trucks. There's going to be dump trucks. Y'all going to be going in and out. So what are we going to do here about getting off the highway? Coming from the cement plant, the asphalt plant is west. So I'm just saying we need to address that before we come off the road, Mr. Chairman. I mean, even to get off the ball field, Commissioner mm -hmm. Stevens, and, and to go down, uh, I mean, our, our folks at the convenience centers has been doing it, but I've, I mean, it's pretty close. We've already had a couple of wrecks up the road 100 yards, so let's, uh, I think, we probably ought to address that situation. That, 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 that's a good point, and I'm kind of an engineering deal, uh, Chief. But it's, you know, I think Brandon's gone, but it's something we definitely need to address, especially with the rebuild of Miller Park that's coming. Mm -hmm. There'll be more traffic going in and out of there. I know Commissioner Stevens has said, and y'all have talked about turn lanes up and down 84, but mm -hmm. that's 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 really something. That's a good point. Right. We need we need to go. I know we were looking, focusing on this side with the acceleration, deceleration, some of that type of stuff. Change the speed limits. Uh, we're really wanting some caution type lights put in or activated lights. We've talked about that, but I do think there needs to be some kind of left turn enhancement through that section. And it could very well be a pretty good section through there that needs it all the way up to uh, uh, Lewis Frazier. I mean, to uh, Bill Carter. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I think, you know, from listening to the fire folks and, of course, uh, Commissioner Stevens, as long as I've been a commissioner, and before, I remember, I mean, he was dragging a hose or beating a fire out at nighttime, and I was trying to get the power turned off. But, you know, if that's the site, I don't have a problem with the site. I mean, you can move that building, could go a lot of different places. But before we do anything, Mr. Chairman, I, mm -hmm. I think we need to really be focused on that turn. getting it off the road. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just me personally. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think... The design, Rusty, I think is great. Good idea. It looked to me like people can, I mean, trucks can come around and go all the way around the station and pull back through. Um, mm -hmm. I, Stay away from the park entrance. Yes, sir. And I think mm -hmm. you've got an ideal spot for it. You've already mentioned you may want to have meetings of other things that's out there. Um, I didn't hear nothing about an EMS area, but I know yours are, you got first responders, but I mean, that's that's going to possibly be uh, something that will happen mm -hmm. later on. I'm, I mean, after we leave from here. But so, um, but I don't know. I think we need to address that pretty short order. And I, don't, I guess that would be the DOT we had to. We will. I, I tell you what, if it's okay, Commissioner Walton, what we'll do is um, I'll get with Mr. Long and have him do a DOT design to bring you, after we talk to him about all these concerns, to have as soon as you can get it. I mean, probably within the okay. next 30 days, that you, okay. you, we could have a design that DOT would would. It'll take more than 30 days for them to even come out there. Well, no, <laughs> we'll, de we'll design it to their standards. I mean, you know, we've done that. Uh, I'm trying to think of the other project we just did it on. But yes, sir, I can, we can have that for you. We can have mm -hmm. that for you. 30 days, mark that down, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, obligating him. I'm obligating him for 30 days, y'all remember that. Let me make myself a note. Mr. Chair. Yeah, I know this is Highway 84. It goes all the way to where I live. And um, they actually did the same thing right outside of Valdosta. Uh, for a short distance, the speed limit goes down. And then right outside the curb cut, if you will, that goes on to Highway 84, there's a caution light. And I guess there's a device inside the, the fire truck or, right at, or maybe inside the station. And they hit that thing when they're rolling out. And that caution light starts blinking out on the highway, telling people something's happening. Mm. Your trucks are about to enter the highway. But we're all I've it. seen that do is let you know that the bulb's working. Right. Yeah, we're, 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 we're seeing it in a, in, in a lot of locations. I mean, that traffic, the speed, and yeah. we can reduce the speed, but, but then you're going to, you know, especially before it's operable, like Commissioner Walden said, you, the, the amount of traffic is in and out of there. Right. And it's a complete stop, left turn. It's not going to be a good situation for the ball field either for people coming from this direction. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, really, I want to. We need look to look at, at the whole area. Mm -hmm. but I think that's a great idea. Well, I mean, it's it's and like I said, yeah. Mr. Stephen knows as much about it as anybody. But I'm just saying that we, I, and even I mean, on 196, you do have that one there on the right. But 
you'd be surprised at the amount of traffic that's coming from the Glenville area now that uh, mm -hmm. you would have to deal with. So well, that's good, all I'm going to say about it. A lot of, a lot of traffic uh, and a lot more regular traffic over time mm -hmm. in and out of this station, <clears throat> uh, regular vehicle traffic. The room was uh, not only a training room, but a little accommodation you had mentioned and y'all had talked about uh, having somewhere that maybe early voting could take place or whatever later on. So that's an accommodation for some of those thoughts earlier too. So good, good point. A lot of thought into it. Yeah. We, uh, we actually, uh, um, <clears throat> Chief Darby and Assistant Chief Huffman came up with a lot of ideas and sketches. They had their whole grocery list, you know, and gave it to me and mm -hmm. said, this is what we want. Um, and then we knocked out a first phase um, and then sat down and met with them and tweaked it even more. So we're at the point now um, where, you know, if we're ready, we could go ahead and start producing construction documents because that'll take several months um, to get those ready so that they could be advertised for bid. But it sounds like that, uh, that we need to wait 30 days, exactly 30 days. Well, no, I, I would tell you, I would. Okay. <laughs> I, well, no, I would, I, my, my thought, y'all, is that, you know, there, there's another pot we can reach into uh, call special purpose tax that doesn't get in your districts uh, that could be used to do the improvements on the roadway. Uh, anything from, from curb cut out. So D cell, X cell, uh, th this deal about improving, you know, I don't want to talk to GDOT and say, look, here's what we're going to do, but I need some safety mm -hmm. funds to do this mm -hmm. in front of this ball field. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't think that would, building construction wise, there's no reason for you to hold up. If the board's comfortable, no reason for you to hold up on construction drawings because of that. That'll be a civil engineering type task. Sure, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I mean, access, they can go in on left field drive and, and go down there. I mean, you got to tear down the old building first. Old building. Yeah, so it's coming pretty shortly. And then you're going to have to tree, do tree kind of help with that a little clearing bit. Clearing and grubbing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I wanted to know about that other pot, Mr. Chairman. Did you know about that other <laughs> pot? <laughs> yeah. Or is this yeah. just been. Well, I was really talking about GDOT safety money <laughs> oh. more than anything, but that's what I'm asking. You're referring to construction traffic, how we could get into the site? Yeah. Yes. Sir. I'm just saying that they could work off, you know, over in there off before the they get out in the yeah. road. So, mm -hmm. so oh. gentlemen. Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. I was coming back to you. Then I'm coming. I know we're getting ready to look at one of the greatest projects mm. in the county. Mm. Like I said, we live the county proud. Mm. Mr. Proud. Brown, question, just for the public, mm. so that we make sure that we get all buys in and everything else. Miller Park is going to provide exactly what for the county now? We can, what kind of service? I want, you know, so that we know, we know what we're talking about, but I want everyone else out there who is listening mm -hmm. to know exactly what it's going to provide. Well, please. Oh, as, oh, as far as uh, fire service? Yeah, yes. Comprehensive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Commission, all this, uh, th this Miller Park station is going to put a fire station in an area that currently is in an unrated area when it comes to ISO. So it's going to drastically improve the ISO rating in the area. Um, covering that five road mile distance. It's all part of the long work and plan that myself and um, Mr. Brown and now Deputy Chief Huffman have been working on for this fire protection plan. So it's going to bring an I a good ISO rating as well as faster response times um, to an area that currently hasn't been getting it. I'm gonna have to I'll yeah. step out one, one, one further for, for the audience, I guess, it's on, on the TV. So this is the commission plan Right. It, this commission had the foresight to go yeah. out and look at, been looked at for some time. Yeah. Uh, so obviously we're following what your plan was, which was a good plan mm -hmm. to put a central station in, and this is that central station. How long has this plan been on the table, Mr. Brown, since what, 20? At least, at least 15 years. 15 years? And we're at this stage now. Yes, sir. So it just didn't happen overnight. No, it didn't. It took this whole boat to come together and do a be a uh, unified front to, mm -hmm. to get where we're at. Had to take a few turns here and there because of mm -hmm. some other things, but we're here. Okay, we're here. So yeah, what do you need now? I mean, like I said earlier, and I've, and I've preached it before, I'm, I'm fortunate I've, you know, I've got a fire department here in the city of Hinesville, and Commissioner Frazier does, and, and, and Chairman Lovett does, but, you know, ISO rating is important, but the reason we're putting it out there is more than anything is to save lives. I right. mean, if they don't never put out a fire, 
and me bring a child up there and then, or somebody with high blood pressure or something like that that you you know you may just save a life and not put a fire out all mm -hmm. year so uh, and chairman lovett's been in that business for years yeah yeah it's um that's what it's all it's, about. A, it's, it's a great step forward for the county it's a great step forward for the county Chairman, what you need on this? We're just looking for authorization to go ahead and, and do the construction drawings. It wouldn't necessarily take right. a vote, but if you want to take a vote, that's fine too. Uh, right. Just authorize him to proceed and bring back, he'll bring back construction drawings and as we've done before, uh, once those are done and he's been part of this process, is in those that be available for the commission to view uh, for, for a brief period of time to make any comments on. We'd set those dates and parameters and then, yeah. then Chief, it would authorize. Chief and Assistant it. Chief. You all bless this plan? All right. All right. All right. I need a, what you need, Mr. Chairman? Motion? I guess let's go ahead. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we allow uh, Mr. McCall to go ahead with the construction, construction plan. plan. Am I saying it correct? Mm hmm. Second, Mr. Chair. Motion is second that we allow Mr. McCall to move forward with the construction plans for the uh, Miller Fire Station. It's been a long time in the making, but it's here now, and we are proud that we're ready to move forward. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand, please. Those opposed? Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Great day for America. Y'all yep. <laughs> <laughs> be careful. Liberty County Youth Commission, Mr. Mosley. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, Y'all investing in a fire department now. You're investing <laughs> investing youth in the community. <laughs> um, another good investment. Another good investment. Mm -hmm. uh, the Youth Commission is facilitated by Mr. Larry Murray, who um, I know if you're familiar with Mr. Murray, is he and his wife, lovely wife, are expecting a child. So oh. we're excited for him, and it's going to be this week, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay? Clint? Okay, sir. Clint? Uh, at, our last, um, at our last update with the Youth Commission, we hired Mr. Murray. And uh, that was back in July. And starting in uh, September, we started doing some things in terms of leadership. Uh, we had Mr. Joe Coleman from uh, Thomasville, Georgia, by way of Zoom. He taught the youth on how to use parliamentary procedures to run meetings. And then we had Ms. Tranesia Martin, the Deputy Director of, of Human Resources for Wake County, uh, North Carolina. She did an excellent uh, interactive workshop on soft skills. That was one of the areas that uh, Commissioner Frazier and others who had worked with the youth and, and Commissioner Stevens had worked with the youth team. And we want to work with them a little bit on the soft skills. So she did a very dynamic uh, interactive workshop. And then we talked about public policy. We talked about the role of public policy in everyday living. And we get a, a workshop uh, for them on that. Uh, then we went to turn and, 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 you know, we have a youth commission, but we need to help them understand about government. And so we, we went through a series of workshops, Zoom workshops, talking about uh, some of the things going on in county government. We had Ms. Glenda Roberts, who did a dynamic job talking about the roles and responsibilities of the CES office. Uh, Mr. Jones came and talked about the tax commissioner and his roles and responsibilities. And then Mrs. Kim McLaughlin talked about budgeting at the county level. In January and February, we did some brainstorming and some projects that they wanted to do. Uh, in the months of January and February, uh, Mr. Murray did uh, talked about African American history contextualized in Liberty County. That is, he talked about some of the African American history uh, in Liberty County. And then the youth wanted a workshop. They said, help us, talk to us a little bit about how we can fine tune, help us out with, with resume writing. So we did some uh, workshop on resume writing. And then in uh, the month of, um, of March, uh, since Mar March is recognized as National Women's History Month, we did a virtual workshop with some of the county female department heads. Uh, Ms. Laura Troutman, she came and talked about, and we wanted not only to talk about their uh, duties and responsibilities, but about their life and how they came to become involved uh, or, or uh, be in that particular area. Instance, for instance, you know, a lot of people who um, have go to college, uh, I, I believe I saw a statistic, 80% of the people who go, who go to college don't necessarily work in the area where they degree. Why, why, why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just saying. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so we wanted to, what, what, was, what was the magnet that attracted you? And, and we had some excellent workshops. Uh, Erica came in, uh, uh, Rhonda came in, and Dr. Bell came in, and they gave some dynamic workshops. Um, 
Commissioner Frage and Commissioner uh, Chairman Lovett and, and Commissioner Stevens. Commissioner Stevens was with us all the, the whole way. And, and they really gave us some great insights. Great, they gave you some great insights about uh, the career decisions that they made. And so in, we decided in, in April, uh, as we were going, uh, we wanted to look at uh, small business owners and entrepreneurs for the month of April. So on the 14th, we have Mr. Reginald Pierce, uh, County Corner and Commissioner Marion Stevens. They're gonna talk about mortuary science as a profession and what led them to go to mortuary science as a profession. On the 21st, uh, recommendation from the chairman. Uh, and on the 28th, uh, Ms. Crystal Hurst of Sparrow Communications. She'll talk about public relations as a profession. And on the 28th, we have Mr. Lisa Cliff of Strategic Biz Solutions to talk about consulting as a profession. And then we have another one of our very own, Commissioner uh, Connie Thrift will come and talk to us about life as a small business owner. So we'll- Stand in the room only. <laughs> 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 we'll talk about those. In the course of also during, during uh, since July, the Youth Commission was asked to develop a video for the census and they did that. And it was placed on um, uh, Mr. Uh, Clint put it on their Facebook page, and also they uh, did one on COVID-19. <coughs> and on during the month of um, February, they had a sit-down conversation or a Zoom conversation with Sheriff Bowman, and also uh, visited with Sheriff Bowman on, in his office, and he gave him a tour of the Justice Center and showed him some things uh, about law enforcement. And those are photos of them with Sheriff Bowman. And lastly, some of the things that they really want to do, we want to try to coordinate. They really want to look at something on anti-bullying uh, workshop. Uh, one of the things Commissioner Frazier is kind of spearheading, we want to really move forward with that and host a series of college tours using a virtual model and then work on recruiting some new members. As you're well aware, sometimes you lose, some, uh, lose members along the way. So we want to do some things to recruit some new um, excited young people. So those are some of the things we've been doing since uh, uh, July of last year for the Youth Commission. Excellent. Excellent report, sir. Thank you for presenting. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. I want to thank you for your participation, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mosley. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mr. Mosley, we appreciate you. Yes. Now, I'm not sure at what regularity you want to report to us, but I would just uh, offer that you would uh, next time maybe have one of your young people to also stand with you, you know, so they can get used to that public presentation, that PR stuff. Uh, we would love to uh, mm -hmm. request that the young lady who's the current chairman, she works, so we want to get her to it. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Well rounded. Well rounded. Mr. Brown, announcements you may have, sir. Just uh, uh, real briefly, just remember we got a budget workshop, actually a budget uh, presentation during the month of April on the 27th. I'll remind you about that next week because we'll see you again next week. And then on May 4th also, mm -hmm. but we'll have those on your calendars okay. um, with, with no problem. And flies. All right. Yeah. Yes, sir. Just a few things. We I talked with Mr. Brown about the uh, the entry exit way at the McIntosh overpass, and uh, it is something that we somehow or another we need to get back with DOT because you've got trucks coming out of that place. Uh, they're trying to get up on the mountain with a load of rocks, and. Uh, it's defeating the purpose of the other 196 being further down. You've, oh. you've got trucks turning, coming over the mountain, mm -hmm. making a left turn. In there? Not only going to the store, mm -hmm. but they're going to that plant. Oh, really? Right through there? Making a shortcut. So, uh, yeah. and there's a cozy sack in that, you know, yeah, but right. they have filled in where it was a ditch. Yeah. They have filled in that ditch to make it an easy exit coming out oh, of that really? plant, coming up to 84 yeah. instead of coming out to Highway 84. Yeah. Who, who filled? in the ditch. I guess somebody from that, that, that rock. rock company. So, so, and I'll bring, a drawing is, is, is worth a million words in this instance, but basically when GDOT got the right of way from the convenience center owner, who at the time was Mr. Sasser, mm -hmm. they granted him an easement right. to come through there. So there's, yeah. an, there's actually an access easement off of 84 right there. Yeah. And so we, you can't close up that easement. Close the and the traffic is going to come and go through there. Right. You know, the challenge is what, if anything, regulation-wise can be done. But I, I don't know. It's like you and I were talking. I, I don't know what can be done there. And I don't, I don't know that GDOT can go back and take that easement back. I, I don't know. But that's, I'll bring the drawing. I think when you see it, it's, uh, it'll show you exactly what's happening there. Oh, so they're taking advantage of it. They're taking advantage of the easement, whether they're mm -hmm. actually 
using the service station or and then coming right. out, or, or whether they're just bypassing through the service station easement and coming around, too. which is a lot of what's occurred yeah. in the rock plant. I mean, uh, I'm just not sure what regulatory authority that, we that have to have. say you can't use that easement to come out. Yeah. But we're exploring that. That's right. that's what Commissioner Stevens and I were talking about. I understand. And, uh, you <laughs> know, we, we might not have the regulatory uh, I guess permission or authority, but as a good neighbor, policies, you know, we might yes. just try to address it to, to them. Uh, you know, yeah. the, the company has been mentioned. Yeah. But because I can see it, just a matter of time for somebody runs up into the back of a truck. Yeah. Trying to get at speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what I thought. With DOT not see it as a <coughs> safety hazard. I, I understand. I, I don't. I, I. I. don't know. Let's let's look at it. And see. Okay. I, I. I don't. I, I. I. really, really, really don't think G. Dot is going to go back and close that easement. Yeah. It's because hard. Because it was part. It was part of the negotiation for the land acquisition. I see. I and see. I just no, don't. don't I, I haven't talked to them. Yeah. And now that's what we want to <coughs> pull it out and say. Look, here. Here's what the easement ca has caused now. Mm -hmm. What do you suggest? Yeah. Since you granted the easement. Yeah. Okay. And that's probably the best right. thing to do. Okay. Let us know, sir. And Mr. Chairman, you said you were working on the industrial authority issue. Yes, sir. Down there with the roadway. Yes, sir. We're working on uh, that. And I'll probably catch up with Mr. Long when he comes back and mm -hmm. take a look at the mm -hmm. drawing because it is coming out to a county road. Mm -hmm. We may not have authority. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with the building. Right. It's just coming out to that county road. We as county commissioners need to make sure it's safe safe yeah so so i did reach out to um mr tolly and ask if if the engineer and the firm would go ahead and at least round those turnouts mm -hmm. so the trucks didn't have to come straight out in the road and they've made those improvements i rode yeah. down there friday so they they've gone ahead they've made the turnouts uh, of course they're going to wait and pave when they right. mobilize one time to pave mm -hmm. uh, so they've done that uh they will be responsible when they do the paving they're gonna they obviously will take care of the break off it's occurred because those pave those it'll extend over it'll taper over actually into islands highway there the other thing that we're talking to them about is the future plan for the site calls for actually four outlets to that road future plan sometime if they ever expand mm -hmm. and a couple of things are going back to them and saying is we really don't want to see those mm -hmm. although there's nothing in any ordinance right now that says they couldn't do them because mm -hmm. they meet the GDOT safety requirements for distance mm -hmm. But we would like to see them just use two means of ingress and egress, or, or both egress, whatever they want to do. Uh, but also to take one of those roads, the farthest one towards the coast, and run it all the way into the park mm -hmm. as a main access road, which will cause some more traffic, but it also gives that fire suppression, that five mile radius, mm. uh, that is real important. Because if they go around the loop and come the long way, it's outside of five miles is for it? the industrial protection. Okay. So uh, looking at a lot of things, but they did go ahead and make one improvement. And then the email I got actually uh, this morning says they have relocated the signs. I express an interest and a concern that there weren't enough construction mm -hmm. and progress signs going on. Mm -hmm. And so they've relocated those. And I hadn't had a chance to check those yet because uh, right. they were supposedly done since Friday. Well, now, the, the other question <clears throat> is from where the main interest is at now to where they are establishing the new interest. Will they do anything to Islands Highway? Because the weight of those trucks, that road is already cracked. I mean, I'm not talking about the edge. Yes, sir. I'm right. talking about the, the, the main highway. Right. I don't think it's going to support all of those trucks between the main entrance and there. Now, will that fall back on the county or will that go to the industrial authority? It'll fall back on the county because the county is responsible for the roads. And, and, and you don't have any impact fee, <clears throat> any kind of impact fees, mm -hmm. uh, which that's a perfect example of if you had some type of impact fees for development. And you could demonstrate that you needed improvements to a capital asset. Then, then if your impact fee structure schedule covered those type of assets, <clears throat> which excuse me, that you do in the study, then you could pass that on to developers, whether it was development authority or developers in the park or subdivision developers mm -hmm. that were going to cause a load on county infrastructure. Period. Be it fire protection, roads, whatever. But so the county has no mechanism right now to require developers of any kind to upgrade those roads. And we and we hadn't done it before, mm -hmm. uh, but 
yeah, that's just kind of where we are again on the regulatory. But we, we so. talked about looking into the impact fees. Well, and, and you couldn't, imp you, you can't do a retroactive, right. obviously. Right. Um, well, you know, the law requires you do an analysis, mm -hmm. uh, really, that you really third party contract that out analysis. You don't mm -hmm. really, I'm not going to say people don't do it in house, but mm -hmm. it's good to have a third party analysis done. Yeah. It comes up with an impact fee schedule for you, much like Flemington did. Uh, they did um, but yeah. that wouldn't be bad to put on your plate to yeah. recommend staffing, try to engage somebody for that. Okay. And the last one I have, I've got, we've got a lot of issue with code enforcement. All right. Yeah, so you haven't got of one right now. Um, that we need to take yeah, a look we're, at. We're, <laughs> take a look at. Uh, you have a, you, you know, you had a part-time code enforcement officer who um, had to leave really to run a full business. I mean, um, because that's really where their livelihood was. We don't have one now? We don't have one. Uh, it's being advertised. I believe it closes this week, as a matter of fact, oh. to do that. So, Mr. The, Stevens, I'm, I'm, you were correct. I guess we do have an issue over there. But uh, we're done. I, I just have a few announcements. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> if you can. Can, 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 I, can I get a few? Go ahead. Oh. I just had a list. That's all. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see. Uh, 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 Mr. Chair and the rest of the commission, I just a uh, few announcements. First of all, just want to congratulate the, the Chamber of Commerce for the 45 under 45 uh, luncheon that uh, was, when was that, last week, the week before? Uh, it was great success. Uh, and actually, we had, had a few of our uh, employees who work for the county who, who were acknowledged, and I just want to mm -hmm. say thank you for, for all the, who were uh, participating and who who got acknowledged. Uh, also, I want to give a, a great big shout out to Will Richardson of, of the Oregon Ducks, who helped take his team all the way to the Sweet 16, who, who, who definitely made us Liberty County proud. Yeah. And then uh, last but not least, uh, to Davion Mitchell and, and the, the Baylor yeah. Bears, who, who brought home the championship. Yeah. I just wanted to say, yeah. you know, Congratulate him and, and Baylor, and of course that's another born and raised Liberty County who 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 made everyone proud, mm -hmm. especially even in the beginning when they were coming out to say he's from Hinesville, Georgia. <laughs> you know, helped put us on the map. Yeah. So if anyone didn't know where Hinesville, Georgia was, I was last night mm -hmm. that, that kind of helped yeah. them at least go to Google and find out <laughs> exactly where we are located. We, we did Davion on early on. Yeah, you must right. be listening to what the chairman but, but said earlier. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank yeah, you yeah. for bringing yeah. Will in. I yeah, absolutely. And see, and then that's what, that's what I wanted to say as well. It's more important because, you know, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want people to leave Will out because uh, if, if y'all remember, Will was very yeah. intricate for us to bring home the, the, uh, the state title. Mm -hmm. I think he went 11 from 11 from the free throw line. Yeah. In, in the state championship game. So that, that team was very dynamic. So Stacked. Stacked. So, yeah, so Will, and, and, you know, he still has another year of eligibility. So next year, you know, we'll be rooting on Oregon. Bring it on home, too. So Thank you, sir. Welcome. Anything else but good in order? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We talked about this road, and Commissioner Stevens and I talked a little bit about it. Two years ago, Buddy Carter was doing a conference call, and he wanted to know, do we have any issues that we need to talk about in Liberty County? And I told him that we should be looking at the safety issue on Islands Highway, because there's one way in and one way out. Well, right now, there's still one way in and one <coughs> way out. Uh, Ron Stevens wanted us to support him and his venture, Joey, at Sunbury. Is that correct? And we did. And, of course, our representative, he didn't get the gambling thing, so they ought to still have plenty of money. <laughs> we, we need to, a letter from this board, Mr. Chairman, that goes to Buddy Carter to let him know the importance of what we got industrial-wise with all the money that has been spent in Bryan County off of 95. What we need in this county right now is to have that road four-laned or widened or have a turn lane in it because we can't have another situation like we had with the hurricane, the storms, and people trying to leave that one-way area out of there. So that would really help us with a lot of different things as far as the traffic uh, from the Dorchester area on out toward 
uh, I-95. Um, and I believe we just need to take the time, and I, I know you are the one that could put pen to paper, you and Joey, and we'll all, I will be glad to sign it, I'll to ask it for some long. support mm -hmm. to help us down there. I mean, if they'll widen bridges on Tybee, I don't know why they won't help <laughs> us on this end. I mean, we we got to ask. The easiest mm -hmm. thing for to do is nothing, and I don't think we need to do that. I think we need to move forward with it and try to get something uh, uh, the ball rolling. I mean, he can say no, but I don't believe that that's what we're going to accept. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's my feelings on it because there's right now that area in the next 20 years after we're all gone, I firmly believe that you'll see golf courses in that area. Uh, as many as two or three. I mean, you've got 10,000 acres of land in different spots down there. So it's going to be just like Hinesville was. It was just farmland. So let's, let's look at it and um, let's see how aggressive they want to be on it. And, and we'll go just as far as we can, even to the Department of Transportation. Because we did accept that road. It was a state route for years and years. And Liberty County took it over and swapped it with 119, E.B. Cooper Road. It used to always be a state route. Now it's a county route. And at that particular time, there were very few people on it. But now it is it's just bad. like Highway 196. I mean, we, we've got areas that need to be addressed. And I think that we're, we're sitting um, a little bit, you know, we, we're trying to beat out fires, and we need to go ahead and just look on down the road. And I, I would just ask you to, and um, it, yeah, I think I think we may be able to, you know, get the ball rolling, especially with you and even the development authority. Um, well, I don't know, Mr. Wallen, I thank you for that. Yeah, it's it's um, um I, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, right. And the, but the the other thing that's got to be incorporated in there too. It's already on the books, which would be good. Is you're going to have four lane that bridge, right? It yes, takes a little time, we, so that is yeah. a Buddy Carter start mm -hmm. uh, to to, to say we, we need we got a we, that bridge needs four lane right now. Mm -hmm. right. Tell you with the yeah. traffic, <clears> it's not safe he right he now. never said that it was a traveling issue when I brought it up, and I don't know who else was on the call, but he just called and they said he's going to have a, a teleconference, and I asked him, and he said, well, that's a safety issue. He said more than anything, he said that's you know, to get people to save lives is to get them off of there out of the flooded area. So he acted like, you know, of course, we we didn't follow up. I mean, yeah. um, but I think ask. we need to. Okay. Have not because you ask not many times. Yep. <laughs> and if these things take time, so if you don't ever get started. Right. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, you know, we can beg just like everybody else mm -hmm. can beg. I ain't too proud to beg. I'm not <laughs> you either. like that, don't you? I ain't too proud. Yeah. An order? Right, anything else for good order? Yes, sir. Let's. Uh, I'll make a motion if you will accept it. I will, sir. To adjourn. Yes. Second. All in favor? All right. Thank you. Have a great evening.